Welcome to the My Bevy Basics User Input Series, Part 5. In this episode, we'll be covering touch inputs. To start this video off, I'm going to go into a little bit about why it's important that Bevy has touch input and despite the fact that I put this video last, how I've reconsidered the importance of touch input as a input form for people using the Bevy game engine. I'll then cover the resource touches that Bevy provides for getting access to touchscreen inputs. The actual touch struct itself that represents the data that is a singular touch event on the screen. The force touch enum that Bevy has that allows you to distinguish how hard the user is pressing on the screen. The touch events that Bevy provides if you need raw access. I'll then go into the classical examples that I've been giving for user inputs, just showing how it's logged into the console. When planning out this series, I put touch inputs at the very bottom of my list of inputs to cover. This was because of two factors. Firstly, because personally I had zero experience with touch inputs, not only in Bevy, but as a game developer as a whole. So as a form of procrastination and allow myself to develop a formula for making these videos on touch inputs and analyzing how the inputs work, I decided to tackle the input types that I had had experience with. And this is shown in the videos themselves as my experience with each type of input decreases as you go further into the series. I have the most experience with keyboard inputs simply because even in prototyping, keyboard inputs are the easiest to get your head around. Then followed by mouse because I have made some first person prototypes. And then gamepad, which I have had very little experience with, but is simply just a derivative of the keyboard in the sense that it is mostly just button pushes. And then finally touch, which I had literally zero experience with. Not only creating, but using as a end product. The other, and frankly, after the research that I've done for this, much more incorrect reason for putting touch last is I viewed touch as the least important and least critical to a game developer as an input. Although this may be true for my gaming endeavors, and maybe even for Bevy the community, as it is a relatively young and not platform rich game engine. This is certainly not true for game development as a whole. This is because I neglected the smartphone gaming industry wholesale, which alone makes up more than half of global gaming revenue. To me, I just didn't consider mobile gaming when I think about video games. While most of us pure indie game developers are not in it for the money and are just trying to make the best product we can for the most people to enjoy, it is important to take into consideration there is a huge market that could use some passionate indie developers to make some great games. For my experience with most mobile games is that they're very derivative and uninspired and hopefully Bevy with its massive paralyzation and development will make it possible for some of us smaller indie developers to make some amazing niche games for the platform. But that's enough of a spiel about why it's important that Bevy includes the touch input system and I hope that they can bring the API more in line with the rest of the Bevy inputs types, allowing for more seamless integration with mobile platforms when these features become available and stable in the Bevy engine. At the moment, the touch input is so vastly different to the other input styles that you more or less are developing one or the other because it takes additional mental gymnastics in order to convert between the two. As I just mentioned, Bevy's Touch API is not exactly aligned with the other APIs, and I'm somewhat mad about it. At the very least, adding Touch Input to your game is the same as every other input. Simply include the d input plugin to your application, and you're ready to go. This is done by either adding the plugin directly or adding the default plugins. Once the plugin has been added to your game, you have access to the Touch resource. This is similar to Bevy's Input resource and Axie's resource provided for the other input types, but also the biggest offender when it comes to breaking the convention. I'll start with the similarities. The touches resource has the same logic flow functions as the other structs, primarily just pressed and just released, while adding an additional just cancelled, which is for touches cancelled by the operating system when losing focus or other forms of hardware interrupt. This is where the breaking of convention becomes annoying because the similarities can lead to to confusion. For the touch struct also provides get equivalents of these methods, but unlike the get inputs on the other structs, they will not return an iterator over all of the touches matching that criteria, but instead will take in an ID and will return the touch data for that corresponding ID. 
I'll go into more detail about the touch struct that these, re these methods return later on in the video. If you need the functionality that the get provides on the other structs, you have to use the iter prefix methods. Or if you're looking for all the touches that would normally fall into the pressed state or current, then you use just iter on its own. I personally feel this is more in line with being idiomatic for Rust as a whole. For most functionality, the iter is how you get an iterator. But is confusing when combined with the other methods that Bevy has already put into convention, as it is not easy to simply use the new struct and call methods that were provided by other structs. Bevy distinguishes each touch by a non-unique U64. This means that if a new touch start event happens to have the same ID for one that is already seen, it should be treated as a new touch starting and you should disregard the previous information you had on the, that touch ID, even if the ID was previously used and has not yet received its end event. When calling one of the previous mentioned methods on the touches struct with a given ID, Bevy will return the touch struct. This consists of four groups of data. Firstly is the ID that this touch represents. This is for if you are iterating over the touch or other method of acquiring the touch, you can identify which finger this a touch is representing, followed by three groups of position and optional force touch, being the start position that this finger originally appeared at, the previous position this finger was at, and the current position of this finger. Bevy provides force as an option at this point because it is operating system dependent if you have force values to read. As of writing, Bevy needs Windows 8 Plus or iOS 9 Plus to get force information. On top of this, because of the differences in, in how force values can be read, the force is split into two variants. Calibrated for iOS, representing the force being applied where one is the average force applied by a press. And on other devices, normalized, which represents the force as a value between zero and one, without any gauge as to how hard that press is on an absolute scale, and instead is just a representation of the minimum and maximum force that the device recognizes. As with all other input types, Bevy also allows you to access the raw events and do with them your own logic. For touches, there is touch input events. These provide the touch phase along with the position, force, and ID for the finger making the touch. Touch phases representing start, end, moved, and canceled. Before I move on to the examples of what touch looks like in the console, it is important to note that, again, breaking convention from the other forms of user input and make it... <sighs> Bevy's touch inputs makes the zero, zero point of the touch coordinates the top left of the screen, as opposed to the bottom left that the cursor uses of the mouse. And I believe the input for UI is also centered on the bottom left. Link in the description, you'll find my GitHub repository for Bevy Basics. When loading that up, you will find this example for user input. To immediately jump into the user input mode, simply set the input example to touch events. Once in touch events mode, this will print out every touch start event that occurs to Bevy. The primary reason why I'm only printing out touch start events is because if I print out all touch events, even without touching the touchpad, anytime the mouse moves, you will see a huge amount of readouts into the, the console about the mouse being moved and which position and where it moved and all that information, which is overwhelming for this demonstration. But as seen, if I touch the top left corner here, I get a position of 11 and 33. Whereas if I touch the bottom corner down here, I get 900. 16 and 940 respectively. This is different to the cursor events which would have down here being 00, zero and up here being 900, 900. Again this is also dependent on the size and resolution of your screen and other information but it is important to note that this is a big change with and hopefully in the future this will be brought more online to easily allow for coordinate shifting and other screen space relative stuff. By pressing page down, I can go to touch inputs. This is the same, but it is iter iterating over the touch events themselves. 
which this demonstrates much more clearly the what I was talking about, about it just spamming the console. These mostly boil down to it displaying every single time the position changes and printing out just a copious amount of information. This information is only being displayed when the mouse, when the touchpad is actively touching. The events, um, on the other hand, will show up even when the touchpad is not being directly touched, if that is the type of event that you are trying to read. That is more or less everything you need to know for user input, and the rest of the effects that you would need are entirely based on how you intend to use the input. Thank you for watching the video, and I am immensely grateful for reaching 500 subscribers. It's uh, halfway to my milestone of 1,000 and being able to get monetized, despite YouTube already putting fucking ads on my videos, because I had to watch my own fucking ads, apparently. But anyway... It, it is, it's phenomenal to have all these people watching, and I do intend for 500 subscribers to put out a 500 subscriber special, despite already having missed it by like 19 people. But hopefully uh, that should be made if I can get the motivation in the next couple of days, and you will all uh, have that to look forward to. And uh, next up on the Bevy Basic list, if anyone's interested, is going to be saving and loading scenes. Uh, and then a video tutorial on the Be the Bevy Editor Police plugin will be after that. So thank you, like, comment, subscribe if you're interested in that, and I will see you in the next video.